What is up everyone? It is your boy Attach and today I am uploading a very important video. This is actually how to improve your aim and make it more consistent and just to improve, just dominate people, go into pubs, destroy everyone in Black Ops 4. So this is a video that I've been wanting to make, but I've been like, I don't want to make a video and just list like a few things that can kind of help. I wanted to like actually go in detail, in depth, and actually let you guys know, give you guys some strategies to improve your aim, do stuff to keep your aim consistent, maybe have some things that can help your aim, improve your aim as a player, make you more comfortable. Because at, at the end of the day, it's all about your controller and how your hand sits on it and being comfortable with it and then learning that way, sticking to it and um, just become an overall better player. So the first step is actually finding a controller you like. This is my scuff that I use. Personally, I like the scuff controller. I've been using one since Black Ops 2. I like the way uh, this grip on the back feels. I like the feels of the paddles. And this is a regular 4PS, not the Infinity, not the Vantage. I've just been using this controller for so long. So it's like hard for me to switch because I'm just so used to it. And the way I hold it, this is like the back. You can see I have like these two fingers on the paddles. Then I have, here's the front, front view. I shoot with my triggers. And so when I need to throw tacticals, or I guess heal in this game, then throw a tactical or call a car and it's something weird. Heal, car, I forgot how you throw tacticals in this game. I don't know. I'm getting used to it. But uh, yeah, so this is how I hold my controller in the front and then I don't need to hit like the A button or anything like that. I can just hit A, back, B for the back paddle. So look at A, B, left A, right B, left A, right B. And personally, this is just comfortable for me. Not saying that you need to get a scuff. You absolutely have to. But when I started using them way back, I found it useful. I enjoyed it. So potentially a scuff can be an option for you or you can learn how to play claw, which a lot of people do. And you play like this. You use like this finger to uh, your pointer finger to click all the buttons and then you hold it like this. So it kind of looks like a, yeah, just like a claw. And this is how they hold it and stuff. You don't need the paddles. But personally, when I was starting to play claw when I was younger, because not everyone could just afford a controller that costs 150 to $200. Um, but a, a, a quick little half is if you are on scuff and you want a scuff, you've had scuffs, do not put a crazy design on. Just get, get the basics. Even when I was like in Black Ops 2 younger, I didn't have a, lot, a ton of cash to just buy scuffs. So I'd always just got the black scuff, like just the most basic design, something that is just like the cheapest I could get just to use it, just to have the paddle technology. And step two is after you found a controller that you like, you found the position you like to hold your hands or you like to put your hands on the control, you find it comfortable, you're getting used to it. This is a very important part as well because it's in the game, it's in every Call of Duty, the sensitivity and uh, this, the button layout. It's Everyone's different, everyone has their own opinions. But personally, I use uh, horizontal, look, look sensitivity horizontal, I use five, look sensitivity vertical, I use five as well, so five, five. I do not play with the controller vibration on, I've never have, and it just kind of like messes me up. When I do use it because I am just not used to it. So no control vibration. I use target assist name assist. Um, it target assist. It helps when the enemy's there and you can get like aim drag onto him. And yeah, target assist is very important. If you do not use target assist, you are insane. You are probably the most skilled professional player ever. But I'm pretty sure every professional Call of Duty player and everyone that's super good uses target assist. So I'd highly recommend you keep target assist on. Uh, stick layout. Just keep it default. And then my button layout, I use tactical. I've just every I've used tactical since Call of Duty 4. Back when the drop shot was the thing, where like if you could drop shot in COD 4, you were nasty and you were killing everyone. So I've always played tactical. And now when I went to PlayStation, because I used to play on Xbox, I used to compete on Xbox and all that stuff. And on the Xbox controllers, you could just shoot. I just shot with my triggers and stuff. But I don't use trigger stops, so I play flipped, which means I shoot with my bumpers. So look at that, bang bang. Instead of having to like, oops, instead of having to like pull the trigger all the way down like that, I just go bang. Instead of going like that, I just go bang real quick. So that is why I use tactical flipped. Like I said, this is literally different for everyone. Everyone has very different settings. Some people have the same. And if you have ones near me, this could maybe help you. I'm not telling you use these settings. These are the best because no settings are the best. It's personal preference for everyone. But for if you're looking at the game for competitive, I would say, like ARs, I would say could play anywhere from 4-4 to 5-5. Five, five. And if you are an SMG player or aggressive player, I would say anywhere from 5-5 five, five to 6-6. Six, six. And this is for strictly competitive professional Call of Duty play. That's what I would say. In pubs, you could probably go a little bit higher because you aren't playing people that can always shoot straight. I mean, a lot of people can shoot straight in pubs, but not everyone's going to hit every shot. But when you're playing in, in a professional match, you need to have your shot on point as much as you can in respawn, mostly in respawn. In SND, you can get away with having a high sensitivity. But in respawn, you're going to always have people shooting at you. You're going to always be sliding, moving, moving around the map very quickly and strategically. So you need to make sure every movement and every shot and every angle you have is on point. And if it's not, if you are like are on 10-10, 
and you're kind of going crazy and like you mess up a movement here, it can get you killed. So that's why having a very consistent and a little bit lo lower sensitivity for competitive is so important. All right, guys, and this tip is, this is the third tip, and this kind of builds in with all the other tips I just said. Um, make sure you shoot your gun consistently. If you want to get good with ICR, use the ICR. Get used to the recoil pattern. Right now, I have grip two on, so there really is no recoil. Even when you get hit, there's no flinch. So this gun is just a straight beam, and this is the best gun to beam people off head glitches. Uh, close range, short range, and medium range. This gun is just a straight beam, but use the gun you want to get better with and improve with. Get used to the recoil, get used to how the gun looks, everything about it is shoot a lot. And then also the way it fits in with the other things I just said, find a controller, use a controller a lot, play a lot, be consistent and don't like, cause it happens to all of us. Like sometimes I'll switch my sensitivity and I'll be like, oh dude, I hate this new sensitivity. I'm not used to it. And I'll go back, I'll just be like, I'm so used to my old one. I'm gonna keep using my old one. And so pretty much when you use a new scuff, go to a new sensitivity, go to a new setting, just stay consistent with it. Like tell yourself, okay, I'm going to play on this sensitivity I am not changing. No matter if you can't shoot straight at the moment because you, this is what you do. You have to improve your shot. It takes time. It's not just going to happen. You're not just going to get a scuff, play on all my settings, and then be like, wow, I have a beam. I can shoot so straight. Like no, it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take days, weeks, months to improve your aim and get it to how you want it to be. But that's on you. That's on you just being actually playing and putting time and putting the effort in and um improving by yourself like that's just what everyone has to do every pro player's done it every pro player that you see can, that can shoot straight and is very consistent at this game or any other game for, for that matter has done it. they put the time in, they put the work in and obviously some people are more naturally gifted than others some people are quicker learner than others but everyone can do it if they want to at the end of the day you should be make sure you're being consistent and putting that work in and now we're going to talk about centering and if you guys don't know what centering is it's pretty much you see there's like four crosshair things in the middle and then they get a little bit bigger when I shoot my gun. Yeah, those are like, that's the like helps you centering right there. Those are the crosshairs. And then like, let's say I'm running through this map. I think someone's gonna be over to my left right here. So I'm running through middle and I'm like running like this. This is most centering is. You start aiming over there naturally. That doesn't mean I'm gonna aim in and walk all the way, which I could if I know someone's for sure there, but I will walk like this or even run like that, just around the corner and just be ready for someone. Cause if I think someone's gonna be there, you want your centering to be near the person though. So when I want to run around the map, I'm gonna be running. I'm gonna be looking at this door, just being ready. I'm gonna look at this door, being ready. Look at this door, being ready. I'm gonna turn the corner, staring over there, because I think someone's gonna be there to be ready. My centering is always gonna be on what I'm going to next or what I'm focusing on. So the bombs there usually run there. If I think someone's in the trailer, I'm gonna be moving like this, make sure my centering is on point, looking for them. And that you just gotta make sure your centering is on point. You don't always, cause you can't just walk like this the whole time. You're gonna be super slow if you walk like this the whole time. It just won't work. I mean, you could. Like I said, you're super slow. So you want to make sure your centering is just on point. Look at that, bang. So you don't want to be running through tunnel because no one can come from over here. Someone can come from right here. You don't want to be looking through a tunnel walking like this because no one's coming right here unless someone's in this corner, which is actually a pretty decent spot. We may have just found something. But uh, you want to be expecting someone right here because you know someone could be here soon. You know someone could be in here. You turn. You know someone could be at the car. Turn. Turn. You think someone's back here? Check this corner. Turn. And that's pretty much what centering is kind of predicting what is going to happen next before it happens is people aren't always going to be there um but it gives you the best chance for when someone is there like if someone's around this corner bang i'm already centered i could just aim in someone's in the bathrooms bang i'm already centered aim in so that's what centering is you want to make sure it's consistent throughout your movement throughout the whole game you just run around just center everything walk around center the center of the window bang wall bang okay bang all right guys and here's the next tip uh this is positioning positioning is the most important thing in call of duty and look at I had a good position. So like I tried to shoot that bot, tried to shoot me in the back, and I killed him. Because when I'm on a head glitch, it's harder for their bullets to hit me, and it's easier for mine to hit them. Because I am behind something, they are not. And pretty much what positioning is, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos, and not a lot of people have mentioned it for like how to like uh, improve your aim and how to get more consistent. It's better to have wor a worse aim and be in a better spot than to have the best aim in the world and be in a bad spot. Because if someone's over there and they have really nasty aim, but I'm here and I have decent aim. I'm gonna kill them nine out of 10 times. Obviously, it's amazing to have an amazing game. You really want to do that. You want your game to be as best as it can be, but you're not always gonna have the best game you can be. Sometimes you're gonna miss a shot. It just, that's just how the game is. No one could ever hit every shot. And pretty much, since I'm behind this car, I'm head glitching, I'm moving around, I'm strafing. I have a good position. I have the advantageous position. And you're not always going to be able to put yourself in the most advantageous position, but when you can, you really wanna take advantage of it. Cause look, I can just strafe around, look for people, and they may have first shot, but when I get behind the car, it's going to be hard for them to kill me because I'm behind a car. And I ran ammo. But like I said, guys, positioning is the most important. So when you do have a power spot or a spot that you can get a lot of kills and take over the enemy team with, you're going to be playing very well. Just because 
people will have to run up and kill you while you're behind the head of just shooting. Like, if a guy runs through that door, I guarantee maybe once does he kill me if he runs through this door when I'm right here. So, positioning is the most important. Remember that. Put yourself in the most advantageous, and in your opinion, the uh, best spots that you could be in to make sure you get the kill or you hold the power position for your team's push and be able to lay cover fire for your teammates, be able to kill people if they try and rush you. And look at that, bang. I'm on a glitch. He couldn't hit the snipe, W Chang. The bot could not hit the snipe, but look at that. Positioning, positioning, positioning. Remember that. Outplay your opponent. Don't always focus on, don't always use your skills, your shot, to have to outplay your opponent because it's not always going to work. For the most part, it could help, but it will not always work. Positioning is the most important. Just remember that while you are playing Call of Duty. And what I'm doing here, I'm actually getting warmed up for this wager I'm about to play with my team. Uh, we're going to play some tournaments later today, so I will be streaming. I've been streaming every day. But what I'm doing is shooting bots. You could, And this is a way to get better. You shoot bots, you play pubs, you play tournaments, you play wagers, you do whatever you got to do to improve. And it could be anything. Like I'm just folk practicing my shot right here. I'm practicing my movement, my shot, my uh, reaction to certain people. I, don't, I do not like to play bots with radar on. So if it's radar on, I'm always going to be pre-aiming something and looking at something. And I mean, yeah, it does kind of help your shot, but I'd rather make it more realistic where there's not, because there's not radar on in what I play. In professional Call of Duty, in pubs, there isn't always radar uh, unless you get a UAV or something of the sort. Oh my God, David Vonderhaar, can you please not burn me? Thank you. Uh, but yeah, to shoot bots, be consistent. Make it, make it like a habit to shoot 500 or 200, 100, start with 100, start with 10 maybe. Shoot 10 bots a day, shoot 100 bots a day, shoot 500, whatever it may be, depending on how bad you really want it. Or just play pubs all day. Pubs are very good because you play people with natural movement. Now, the reason I don't shoot bots all day is because bots do not always have natural movement. They are robots. They are machines that are controlling them. So, pretty much, they don't have natural movement like a player will. Like, they don't really slide and jump around and turn around real quick all the time. Like You could program, to do, you could program them to do that. But they will not always do that. So that's why it's good to shoot some bots, play some pubs, then play against upper level players, top pro players, top uh, amateur players, and uh, just to improve your aim, improve your movement, improve everything, your awareness on the map. All right, guys, and the last tip, this is more an advanced tip for people that have been playing a long time. They've already found their controller, found their sensitivity. They're already shooting pretty straight. But this is more advanced for the people that want to, like, either work towards competitive or just improve their public match game and become, like, a dominant pub player. Like, all those YouTubers, like, Swag, Korean, like, all those people that just dominate pubs and um, pretty much is awareness. You have to be aware. You have to get used to the spawns, used to rotations, used to the hot spots on the map where people are going to be. Because when you know spawns, you know where people are more likely to come from. And this just takes, you can learn it, you can learn the system, because there is a system to it, but it takes a lot of time. It's not something that you're just like, okay, I know they're spawning here now, I know they're spawning there now. And it's it's very tough, it's not easy to do, but when you have it down and you're able to spawn trap people and know where they're gonna spawn, you kill someone right there, you know they're gonna spawn there now. Like it's, this is very advanced. So give yourself time, try and recognize certain things, certain, um, yeah, try and just try what? certain patterns. So that's what I'm looking for. Look for certain patterns when you're playing. Like on firing range, if I if I'm top wood and I shoot them there, they're either gonna spawn closer to the flag or to the left bathroom because I'm blocking the spawn point by preaming. Or if my teammate is on that spawn point, I'm blocking it, so they will spawn closer to me on the A flag. I think that is or C flag. I forgot. They're gonna be down there or they can be back bathrooms. And then it all comes down to timing. Like when the map first starts, how long does it take for someone to run? to bottom wood when you can be like on the head glitch premium the bottom wood door so learning the timings on all the maps and all the game modes is super important because it's different on each so learning the spawns timings which leads up to awareness because you'll know you'll be used to it in game when someone runs up to you you'll be like, oh sometimes if you're not expecting them they're gonna get the kill but if you are expecting them and kind of looking in that general direction you have a way better chance of getting the kill than if you were not looking at them so make sure to build your start trying to build your awareness start trying to recognize patterns in the game um, from spawn points to timings to um, certain shots. Find the good positions where you think a lot of people run through and get get an advantageous spot on them and be waiting for them. And guys, that's going to do it for the video. Like I said, I do hope this helps a lot. If it does, make sure to leave a comment, drop a like. I would really appreciate that. I will see you guys all in the next video. And as always, my name is Attach, and I'm out. Peace.